guys and welcome back to our flipped classroom. This week we are looking at week 9 vocabulary and just to remind you our three I can statements for this week are I can learn my week 9 vocabulary, I can create flashcards using definitions, word associations, and images and remember I'll give you examples of those and I can study my vocabulary which will be important for your quiz on Friday. All right. Remember on your flashcards that you're using right now, on one side you just put the word, that's all that goes on that side. On the second side you put the definition, an example or a word association, and a word association is something that helps you remember what the definition of the term is, and then you draw a picture. And I know you guys hate drawing, but just stick with me and it'll help you remember your definitions. Remember too, if you go to youtube.com and you search your book Cranfill, you'll find my channel. You can find this video again, or if you want to look on Quizlet and study that way, you go to quizlet.com and type in Cranfic and you'll find all of our sets of flashcards. Alright, so your first word this week is superficial. Um, is it, it's not necessarily a difficult word, but when we think about superficial, we think about um, people usually, but the definition is lacking in depth. Okay, so something that is lacking in depth is very shallow, okay? Nothing goes very deep. So the examples that we've got here are cosmetics. So a lot of times if you hear about um, like a bad storm passing through, you'll hear that it was only cosmetic damage to the house, which means maybe they lost a few shingles, a bit of the siding, but nothing happened into the actual house. It was all on the outside. Our other example is people. When we think about superficial people, um, sometimes we think that all they care about is what's on the outside. They don't necessarily care about working on what's in the inside or being a good person. They just want to make sure their looks are good. Okay, the picture I drew is a little different. You've got your local swimming pool here and it says no diving because you can tell that it's only three feet deep. Okay, because the water is superficial, it's lacking in depth and you wouldn't want to dive in that. Alright, your next one is superfluous, all right? It looks like superfluous, but it's pronounced superfluous, all right? It's an adjective. Remember, adjectives, adjectives describe something, all right? So you've got more than enough as your definition. So when you think of something that's superfluous, it's going to be beyond what's needed, okay? So examples of this are clothes. Most of us have more clothes than we need for seven days in a week, okay? So we have more than enough of that. Most of us also have enough food. If you think about something like Thanksgiving, I don't think I've ever run out of food at a Thanksgiving meal, okay? There's always a super superfluous amount of food at those meals. And then the picture that I've drawn goes with our third example here, which is resources and information. In the 21st century, most of us have a cell phone, we have computers, we have iPads, um, we watch radio, or we don't watch the radio, we watch TV, we listen to radio, we have a wealth of information to get answers for anything that we would want, okay? So there's a superfluous amount of information and resources for us to use um, to find the answers to our questions. Alright, your next one is suppress. All right, your definition here is a verb, okay, so it's an action, and it means to end an activity, okay? So your examples for this are your teachers suppress you from texting in class. They suppress that activity because they want you to pay attention, all right? I also put down riots. Police are going to be the ones that are suppressing riots to make sure that the people in the town are safe, okay? So your image for this for suppress to end an activity is a stop sign, right? Your images that you're drawing on your flashcards should be able to be quick and useful to you. So if you see something like stop, you know that something has ended and that's suppress, okay? All right, your next one is surreptitious, all right? Um, be careful of the spelling with a T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Um, this is also an adjective, which means something is secret or stealth, okay? And then I put in parentheses that stealth means sneaky. So when we're thinking about surreptitious, um, an example of this would be military operations. If the military is trying to attack or invade or simply just check in on something that they don't want the other party to know, they're going to be surreptitious, okay? They're not just going to bust in and say, hey guys, we're here to check everything out, okay? They're going to be sneaky. They're going to go where maybe the other people don't see them. 
Um, I also put Trixie, my dog, stealing food, and that's the picture that I've drawn down here. Um, you can see that Alex's back is turned, right? And then Trixie is stealing the food off of the table. Okay, she's doing it when Alex is not looking. So she's doing it in secret, and she's stealthy because it's not stealth to do it if someone watches you, right? So stereoptitious, secret or stealthy, you're trying to be sneaky um, in order to get around at the obvious view. Your next one is tactful, um, and I'm sure at some point either a teacher, a parent, or another family member has asked you guys to be more tactful, okay? So it's an adjective that means diplomatic or polite. Now diplomatic is going to refer to um, politics, and if a politician is trying to express um, something that he or she is angry about, they don't just walk up and say, like, I hate that kid because, right? They would say, I disagree with him or her because of these points, okay? So tactful means that you find a more polite way of expressing yourself than being blunt, all right? So examples of this are your best friends. Your best friends will tell you the truth, hopefully, about an outfit or something um, that you ask their opinion on, but they will hopefully find a way to say, maybe that's not the most flattering thing that you've ever put on. Right? Um, I also put down parents' reminders. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Right? Because they want you to be polite. If you're going to express an opinion, you need to do it tactfully. Right? So um, when I think of tactful, this is what comes to mind. Instead of saying, like, hey, your breath really smells terrible today, you might want to say, would you like some gum? Right? Because that seems like you're politely offering whoever a piece of gum, when in reality, you're like, I wish you would stand a little further away from me. Okay? So tactful means that you are finding a new way of saying or doing something that is in a polite manner. All right. Your next one is tenacious. All right, when you think of tenacious, I want you to think of stubborn or persistent, okay? So your definition here is, is persistent or resolute. Resolute here means determined, okay? So tenacious, your examples are athletes. When you think of an athlete and you ask them, um, I know you've got that big race coming up or that big game coming up, are you excited? Most times they're going to say, yes, and I know that I will succeed because of this, right? Or I've been working really hard. Um, at my pitches on this, or I've been practicing my backstroke for the meet on Saturday. They're not going to say like, well, I hope I do well, but it's really up, to, it's up in the air, okay? Athletes are tenacious in their skills, in their practicing, because they want to win, okay? So they're resolute into winning, and so they have to be persistent in how they practice. Um, I also put down stubborn people, just in general. Um, if you have ever had that friend where you know they're wrong and you try to prove that they're wrong and you lay out all this information and at the end of the day they're still like, I know, but I think this way because that's how I think. They're tenacious, okay? No matter what is set before them, they're persistent and they're going to believe in what they want to believe in, okay? So the picture I drew here to remind us of athletes who are tenacious is the finish line. Okay, so again, athletes are going to do whatever it takes. They're going to work really, really hard to get to that finish line. Tenacious. All right. Your next one is transient. Um, your definition for that is temporary or fleeting. Okay, fleeting means something that is escaping you. Okay, it's about to move on. It's moving away quickly. Temporary is something that doesn't last for very long. So when we're thinking of examples for that, think about moments in time. Sometimes... You'll be really excited for a moment and then you look back to two minutes later even and you're like I don't feel that same way right or if we're thinking about happiness a lot of people say happiness is fleeting right because some people are really happy for just a few moments and then it's hard to stay that happy all the time right so it kind of falls flat so people say happiness is transient right because it moves on it doesn't last for very long it's temporary when you think about the weekends, right, you've got five days in the school week, in the work week, you've got two days sandwiched on the end of the, those long weeks for your weekend, right? So the, in that sense, our weekends are transient. They're fleeting because they escape us quickly and they don't hang around for very long. So the pictures I've drawn, um, I did two different ones. I drew the theater masks of happy versus sad um, to remind us of happiness maybe not being something that stays around for very long 
or I drew a work week calendar right in the next out the week, um, the weekend days to remind us that it doesn't last for very long. So transient is something that's temporary. All right, your next one is venerable, okay? Um, in previous weeks, we've had a word reverence that meant that you gave profound respect, okay? And we talked about in some instances that that could mean because someone was of an older age, that could remind you a little bit of venerable. Um, venerable is an adjective that means respectable due to age, okay? So if you think about people who are wise, that's because they've typically had a life experience further than what you have had, okay? So people who are older have seen more, they've done more, and in turn, they have more sagacity, right? They have more wisdom. Um, an example, I put down adults, parents, grandparents, and teachers, okay? So just people who have been through something that maybe you haven't been through yet. And you give them that respect because you acknowledge that they have gone through more than you have, okay? So the picture I drew is a happy birthday cake, um, and this is somebody's 100th birthday, okay? So respectable due to age, venerable, being 100 years old, I would have respect for that person. All right, your next one is vindicate. When you think of vindicate, um, typically we're gonna think about criminals, all right? Your verb um, means to clear from blame. So if we're thinking about what a lawyer does, they look at a client or they look at um, a criminal or an accused person, right? And they say, I'm gonna um, do my best to clear you of all this blame. Okay, so if I am blamed um, for stealing the last piece of pizza at work, right, um, somebody may come to my defense and say, no, I saw Mr. Lopez steal that pizza, right? And then in that moment, I would be vindicated. I would be clear from the blame because somebody else had spoken on my behalf. All right, so down here is our picture. I just drew a police report, right, and I put Ms. Cranfield and I put not guilty because someone spoke on behalf of me. They cleared the blame of the pizza slice, right, and now Mr. Lopez needs someone to step up and vindicate him. is wary okay so your last one is wary it's an adjective that means watchful or alert much like myself when I just saw that the board here and all the boards down here were falling I had to be alert enough to know how to stop that board right I was wary knowing that this is a lot of weight to sit on this stool so I kept my eye out in case something fell all right, so your examples that I put down are police. Police are wary when they're patrolling, right? They are wary of speeders to see if someone is going over the speed limit because that would be a problem. Um, parents are wary of people um, in public when their children are out there, right? Because they want their children to be protected. Um, my mom always told me before I left the house that there are thieves and perverts everywhere. She wanted me to be watchful and alert when I left the house so that I didn't get myself in any situation that would be bad for me. Animals are alert. Um, if the doorbell rings, right, my dog is going to jump up and run to the door to see who it is, and she, she'll probably bark because she doesn't know yet who it is. So she's being watchful for, for me and Alex, right, and she's being protective. So the um, picture I drew here is just a face, right, of someone sort of keeping their eyes off to the side, keeping that watchful eye, right? Wary means um, watchful or alert um, and sort of predicting something that may happen. All right, so there are your week nine vocab words. We made it through without knocking them down, sort of. All right, remember that you will have a vocab quiz. You can use the Quizlet link, you can use the YouTube link to study, and you can use the flashcards you've made. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.